Hello everyone! Let me know if you can see me and hear me clearly before we begin this live stream. Um, so hopefully it's going to work. It's just me on my own today with you lovely lot. So before we begin, if someone can just say if you can hear me, if you can see me, that would be wonderful. Hello, Savam, how are you? Happy Thursday, hope you are doing well. Savam, can you hear me and see me? Is it okay? I'm very good, thank you, Savam. I'm very well, I'm very good today. It's almost the weekend, which makes me happy. Hearing confirm. Jose is saying yes, so that's good. Hi, Jose. Hi, Andy. Um, I'm hoping Lolly Lolly is here. Raphael, everything is okay. Okay, very good. Good. Hello, everyone. How are you all? Please let me know in the comments. Thank you for joining today. I'm doing well. I've had a busy week, but all is good. So today's live is going to be on professions. So we're going to hopefully learn some key vocabulary. We're going to learn some about jobs in the UK. And as always, if you have any questions, you can type them and I will hopefully try to answer. So my job now is an English teacher. And I've been teaching English for around eight to nine years, nine to 10 years, maybe. <laughs> I, and I absolutely love teaching English. Um, I started on social media only a few months ago, and I really enjoy it. Um, I find it just amazing. <laughs> I'm not great at technology, but I'm getting there. But before, hello, Johnny. <laughs> um, before I was an English teacher, I've done many jobs. I've worked in bars, I've worked in restaurants, I've worked in call centers, <laughs> I've, I've worked in a theater, as theater is my background and my passion. So I want you to tell me if you can what your current job or occupation is. So let me know in the comments. Um, I'm just gonna see who else we've got. So Sadiq, hello. Um, Kral, hello. And Art World, Artsy, hello. Are you also teaching at school? Yes, I do currently teach in a school. I will be finishing for the summer holidays very soon. Um, as I'm based in Czech Republic and for them their school holiday ends the end of June and they have all of July and all of August on holiday so I'm close to the end um, how do I get rid of that one there we go so Saram your passion is also theatre that's lovely Sadika said, I want to a speaking friend to improve my English. Very good. Good place to ask. Hopefully you will find it. So, Wam, do you work in a theatre or is it just your hobby and your passion? Let me know. <clears throat> OK, so Lolly Lolly is saying that she is a mental health nurse. That's amazing, Lolly. That's such a wonderful, kind, helpful job. Um, I really respect you for doing that job. I believe it must be quite tiring, quite intense at times. I'm hoping it's also rewarding for you. But that's that's lovely. That's a wonderful job. Um, Johnny has said, I'm an engineer. Very nice. Very good. What type of engineer? Can you tell us more? Um, God has said, is the purpose of the channel teaching people how to speak English? I was just wondering. Yes, hopefully. That's what I hope to help with all aspects of English. 
Um, but I focus mainly on speaking and improving confidence. Um, so that's my goal. Ooh. Okay, so we've got Sue. Oh, I've gone down very really fast. Johnny has said, I'm working as a miming surveyor since I graduated the university in 2006. It's almost 15 years. Wow, that's excellent, Johnny. Do you like your job? Um, I have to admit, I'm not fully sure what a mining surveyor is, but it sounds very interesting. Um, Superwam is saying, I'm doing mechanical engineering. Ooh, very interesting. Do you like it? Art World is saying, I'm a student. What are you studying? Andy is saying, I'm a web designer and IT programmer. Very good. I need someone like you in my life to help with all the computer technology aspects. Um, Sadika said he's human resources, very vital to help any workplace flow effectively. Very much needed. Um, Jose, Jose, you're a musician. I never knew this about you. You will have to send me um, something of yours. I would love to hear it or see it. That's such a talent. Um, God Snipes has said, is this channel mainly targeted toward people who don't particularly speak English? Yes, exactly. That is my aim, hopefully to help people learn English. Um, Rosenhando, hopefully I'm saying your name right, is saying I'm a student. Excellent. And Jose said before, if you weren't a teacher, what would you like to do? And that brings me on perfectly to my next question I have for you all, which is what is your dream job? So are you doing your dream job now? Or if you could go back in time and maybe make some changes, what job would you love to be doing? So for me, I think my dream job would be to be a marine biologist. So that is someone, well, what I like to imagine, it is someone who works with sea animals, particularly I love dolphins and turtles and whales, and you sort of explore their habitat, to their world, you learn more about these magnificent, beautiful animals. So that for me is what I would have loved to be doing. I would love to be a marine biologist. But unfortunately, in school, I was not very good at biology. <laughs> I was much better at English and at maths, but my science skills, were fairly low. <laughs> so I wish I could study harder or I should have studied harder and then maybe I could be a marine biologist. It would be great. Um, so Artis said his dream job, I would love to go abroad traveling. Would that be for a job or is that just for fun? Let me know. Um, Fantastic job for biology. So Superman is saying I work in a theatre and it's also my hobby. So would you say that you are already doing your dream job? Is this your dream job? Um, God Snipes has said. Um, where have you gone? There you are. So this channel is for people who don't speak English and for them to learn and grasp concepts and context. Yes, exactly, exactly right. So Valentin, hello Valentin, thank you for joining, how are you? He has said, when I was a kid, I was going to be a scientist, amazing. So are you not a scientist now? Let me know. What else are we missing? 
Super Wham has said, my dream job is to do a job as a mechanical engineer in a big car company such as Jaguar. Great goal. And I believe that you can achieve this. Um, that would be wonderful. Um, Lolly Lolly has said, my dream job was to become a Hollywood star. Why not? <laughs> Why not, Holly? That would be great. <laughs> that would be good. Would you be an actor or a singer? What would you do? Um, hello, Hero from Pakistan. Hello. So Artis said his dream job would be aeronautical engineering. Wow. <laughs> that sounds, is that like an astronaut? maybe that would be fun jose said my dream job would be an english teacher and i think jose you would be an excellent english teacher um you would be wonderful because you're very kind okay so if that's everyone's dream jobs if anyone else adds further i'll have a look back and if i do miss your comment i do apologize <laughs> so let's go ahead and talk about some key vocabulary Kral, you're a chef very nice job good to cook food <laughs> okay so our first key vocabulary word is just the word job and this just means a steady workplace where you earn money so we all know this word i think if there's any words you need me to explain more do let me know our second key vocabulary word is work. So it's slightly different from job. The job is the position of regular employment and work is a mean of earning income. So it's a place we go to earn money. So our next one is the word boss. Boss. Does anyone know what a boss is or who a boss is let me know in the comments so you're spelling that word b-o-s-s -S, the word boss and i'm going to go through it i believe that most people will know this word some people like their boss a lot of people don't like their boss <laughs> maybe you are the boss <laughs> So a boss is a person who is in charge at work. So they are someone who runs the company along some way. Yeah, super wham, you've got it perfectly. It is the leader of employees. Perfect. That's exactly what a boss is. So they lead, they hopefully lead. Um, another word you could use there is manager. So the boss or the manager. Now, my next two words for you are very similar, but have different meanings. So these two words are employee and employer. So employee and employer. Do you know the difference between these two words? So the employee and the employer. <laughs> Let me know if you know. And let me know if you are the employee or perhaps you're the employer. So everyone is getting so good for the explanation of the word boss. Very good. Johnny is saying it's the chief. Good word, chief. Sahid is saying the head of department or office. Exactly. So that's exactly what the boss is. OK, so Lolly Lolly perfectly has come in here and said the employer gives you the job. So that's exactly right. So the employer is the person who hires someone to do the job. So that's the employer. English Vibes, hello! You're not late at all. You're right on time. Lovely to see you. Jonas, hello! Thank you for joining. I've just asked if anyone can tell me what an employee is. An employee. So Jose, well done. Employee is the person who works. Very good. Wotech, hello, has said the employee is a worker. Exactly. Well done, everyone. So the employer is the person who hires someone and the employee 
is the person who does the work. They've been hired. So they're the two differences. They can be confusing, so it's good to spot the difference. English Vibes has said, employee is the engaged one by employer. Very good. And art, the members who work there. Exactly. Very good. And Super Wham, serving a job in organizations. You guys are all brilliant. Um, so our next word, which I'm just going to go into, is the word schedule. A schedule. <laughs> you might notice I say it very British, <laughs> the schedule. And that is someone's work hours. So a typical job, perhaps in the UK, would be Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. That's maybe the office hours. And this would be your schedule. So that's your schedule. Your next one, which I think you will all know, so I'm going to just explain it to you straight away, is the word day off. A day off. And this is a free day from school or your work. So if you have a day off, you essentially have a holiday. It may be because you've taken it as a holiday or perhaps it is a bank holiday. Or for whatever reason, you have a day off. Um, English vibes, very good. So the employer and the employee is a little bit like the interviewer and the interviewee. Very good. Yes, uh, people in the UK do say schedule, schedule. I say schedule though, but both is correct. Um, okay, I have another question for you. This is a tricky one. So who can tell me what the expression means make ends meet to make ends meet what do you think this expression means i'm going to give you a second to type your ideas while i have a sip of my water <laughs> english vibes you've made a very good point Take a day off, it's a phrasal verb, exactly. Very good, very good. English vibes, very good. Explanation of make ends meet, very quick. So you said, yes, it means to get by. Like to have enough money, very good, very good. So yeah, that's a very good explanation of the expression to make ends meet. And this just means to make enough money to live, enough money to survive. So if you said to make ends meet, it doesn't mean that you have a lot of spare cash. It just means you have enough for the essentials. So this would probably include food to pay for all your bills. You would have enough to survive for the month. So you would say, I make ends meet. I get by, as English Vibe said. Art well to take leave from work, that would refer to having a day off. That would be more to take a day off is to take leave, not for to make ends meet. But it's a good expression to use to make ends meet. Okay, our next word for you. Lolly, Lolly, I think you're going to know this one because I actually think this is a French word. If I said to you the word entrepreneur, what do you think this means? An entrepreneur. I'm pretty sure that this is a French word that we just use in English language. Lolly, lolly, perfect. Kral, perfect examples for to make ends meet. Yes, it is to earn money and it's just enough to get by. Very good. That's very good examples of to make ends meet. That's just another way to say it. Art world, the person who gives advice about financial. Is that for your guess for entrepreneur? 
it's not it's not co not quite right but it's a very good guess lolly lolly yeah you've said it very well <laughs> it means you run a company for example and lolly am i right in saying that entrepreneur is a french word i think i'm right well i'm not sure yes um jose said a person who makes and invest in money english drives has said i know that word but i can but I can say it, or I can't say it perhaps in my native language. I don't really know what it means. <laughs> it's a tricky word. Um, Kral, I'll come on to your point in a second. So an entrepreneur is exactly what Lolly Lolly has said, and it said said, and it is a French word. <laughs> and it means someone who starts and runs a business. So if you set up your own company and you work for yourself, you could describe yourself as an entrepreneur. Even if you have another job where you're working for someone, but you still have a side hobby that you are trying to make as a job, you can then still say that you are an entrepreneur. So it is a good word to use. Um, so you should keep practicing saying that one. Super one, you said it perfectly. It's the founder of something and suggest a way to achieve. Very good. Yes, exactly. English vibes, a businessman, a business person. Yes, you could say that they are a businessman or business person. Kral, someone who starts their own business, especially when this involves seeing a new opportunity. That's a wonderful explanation of the word entrepreneur. Perfect. And Kral, I would like to just go back to your question that you asked, if I can find it. Um, flush the question, Kral. Ah, oh, there we go, thank you. What about bring home the bacon? So that's another popular expression or idiom we use in the UK, and it means someone who earns the money. So if you earn the bulk of the money for your household, you would say, I bring home the bacon. And it just means you make money. Personally, I don't think it's that commonly used anymore within the UK, as in I don't hear many people say it, but it's a good expression to know. Okay, so you've all doing amazing. Our last one for our key vocabulary, this is a hard one. I've saved the hardest to last is the expression, add another string to my bow. So if someone said, I've added another string to my bow, what do you think they mean? To add another string to the bow, to my bow. So I've added another string to my bow by teaching English. Hmm, what do you think I mean? Hmm. While I'm giving you time to think and write English vibes, I will read your expression, what about bread and butter? So do you mean that as an expression, the bread and butter or the food? <laughs> but if someone is talking about bread and butter, it means normally just a little amount of money because typically bread and butter is fairly cheap. Danny said you're fired. <laughs> um, art, good guess, or maybe he just increased his work. Good guess, not quite right, but I see where you're going. Lolly Lolly has said that person study another thing to improve what they did very close very very close to the definition of add and <clears throat> add another string to my bow so i'm going to tell you so if someone says i've added another string to my bow it means they've learned a new skill so for example, I've added a string to my bow because I've just learned how to speak Spanish. <laughs> so I've learned a new skill. 
I've added another string to my bow. So if you're going out of your way to achieve something, or perhaps you've just passed an exam, or you've got a new job, then you can say, I've added a string to my bow, meaning I've gained another skill. I've gained something good. So just another fun expression for you to use. English vibes like to get advantage plus the money. Kind of, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be earning more money. It just means you've got another skill. You can do something else. Okay, so we're going to move on. That was your key vocabulary to this question. What do you do? So this is the question that we would typically use in the UK when asking someone what their job is. So it's perfectly fine to say, what is your job? What is your occupation? What is your profession? They are all grammatically correct and everyone would understand you. But the most common sentence by far we would use, especially in the UK, is what do you do? So if you ever hear someone saying this, it's just meaning they want to know what your job is. And obviously this can be changed to what do they do or what does she do? So it can be changed the pronoun can be changed. But this just means, what is their job? I'm not particularly sure where this has came from. <laughs> I, I don't know why we've changed it. But typically that is what, when you hear it asked, that is what someone means. Okay, so English vibes. Lolly Lolly has said, what do you do for a living is another great example what do you do for a living and I personally prefer this one than what do you do because what do you do even though we know it all about jobs often our job is just one part of who we are and we are made up by our other hobbies and skills that we have but for some reason we really focus on what someone's job is and perhaps we judge someone or we feel judged by what our job is. So that's why I personally prefer for what do you do for a living? Raphael, yes, can we say what do you do for a living? Um, so uh, English vibes, what is the difference between job and occupation? So that's my next point. And they are the exact same meaning. So you can just say, what is their occupation? What is their profession? What is your job? So you can say it either way. It's perfectly fine. Job is probably just a bit more generic and encompasses everything, but they are all perfectly to use. Yeah, Johnny saying, what does she do? Perfect. So what does she do? What is her job? <laughs> so our next one, if you want to leave your job, so that means you are giving up your position and you are going to tell your employee that you are leaving. There are a couple ways to explain this. You can either say, I'm leaving, or most commonly in the UK, we would use the expressions to resign or to quit. So I've resigned. I've quit my job. So they all mean the same. So they're the three ones that I would say when you are telling someone that you are leaving or you've left your job would be, I've resigned, I've quit, or I've left. So they all mean the exact same. But resign is probably the most formal of those three ways to say. You also have to add to this to retire to retire but retire means ah English vibes I always think that you're in my head slightly <laughs> retire when they are old and leave job perfect I was literally about to say this so to retire means you stop working because of old age or health reasons so in the UK most people would retire at the age of 65 
65, 66 is when you would get a pension from the government. So that means you would receive some money from the government to help you. And often it's depended on how much you have earned throughout working. It depends how much you will receive in your pension. But the age keeps going up and up and up. So for my generation, it's more likely that we will work until the age of about 70 before we can retire. Let me know what it is for you in your home country. When is it common for people to retire? And do you get a pension from the government? Or is that not an option? Um, English Five is saying it's 60, age 60. That's good. That's, that's better to be slightly younger. Resign, yes. Perfect, that's how we say it, to resign. You've resigned your job. So that's different from retirement. So retirement is when you're old or health reasons. Resign is when you're quitting. So Superwam is saying above 60 years in India. Mm, seems to be fairly similar throughout. I think 60 is a good age to retire. I don't think you should work much later than that. Mm. Johnny, that's a very good question. Are men and women equal? No, not in the UK, actually. Um, so I believe, but I do need to check this, this statistics, for women it's 65 and for men it's 67. I'm not sure why. It seems very unfair, but that there's definitely an age difference for the retirement. So men seem to work slightly longer before they can get their pension. But maybe that will change. And the age just keeps going up and up and up in the UK. In France, a lot of protests about the age of retirement. I can understand that. I can understand that a lot. Um, so Jose is saying in Brazil, 65 um, for women and 70 for men. So that's fairly similar to the UK then actually it just seems quite old i think if you work hard you should be able to retire younger hopefully okay so oh so david <laughs> some of you may know him he's my brother <laughs> he knows all the facts he's just uh, popped up retirement ages have equalized now so they are both the same okay so ignore what I said earlier, they're both the same. Thank you, David, for correcting me. <laughs> and David, are they both 66 now then? Or what is their age? But it's good that they're equal. I think that's the right, the right way to be, um, definitely. Okay, let's just see if David gets back to what age in the UK it is. <laughs> but they all seem to be roughly the same, above 60s. Mid, mid to high 60s when we can retire. <laughs> okay, so another difference from quitting or resigning is if you lose your job. So if you lose your job, it means perhaps you have been dismissed or sacked or fired. So they are three quite popular ways to say that you have lost your job. So to be dismissed, sacked or fired. So they all mean the same thing, that you have been let go of your job by your employer's choice, employee's choice. <laughs> yeah, so English vibes exactly, to sack someone. Perfect. So they all mean the same, to be dismissed, to be sacked, to be fired. And we also have a slang version of this in the UK, which is to get the chop. So I've got the chop. That means I've been fired. So you probably wouldn't be saying, I've got the chop to many people. This would be more to your close friends and family members, but it's just the slang way of saying I've been fired or I've been dismissed from my job. Unfortunately, that's quite a common occurrence at the moment with the state of the world, uh, that lots of people are losing their jobs. Um, English vibes, to be passed over 
I personally haven't heard of this before for losing your job to be passed over. Um, I don't think that is an expression that I've ever heard. Um, passed over is more used if someone has died. To be temporarily laid off, um, Lolly Lolly has said, yes. So you can be permanently laid off or temporary as well. And that just means the same, you've been let go of your job. If you've been fired or sacked, this is normally you have done something wrong. So that is the reason that you've been fired or you've been sacked from your job. Laid off tends to refer to more, the company has run out of money, so they need to let people go. And this is similar to my next point, which is to be made redundant. So this means to lose your job because your employee no longer needs you. Sometimes when this happens, you may receive a money package. So if you're being made redundant, you will receive a money package. With, it depends on your company. Um, laid off, yes, uh, English vibes is a phrasal verb. You're spotting the phrasal verbs very well today. Very good. Um, Art has said it means the person has been dismissed because they have not been honest with work. Perhaps that may be one reason, yes. Sometimes it is not their fault and it may be the company's fault and they ran out of money. Um, Raphael, you've made a good point. During the pandemic, a lot of people were temporarily laid off is what you should just finish that sentence with. So they were temporarily laid off. Farewell more means goodbye. But yes, very good point. Um, and redundant just is another way to mean they have to leave their job. And you would often get a money package because of this. Um, but unfortunately, we are living in times where a lot of people are losing their jobs, which is very sad. OK, so they are all our key questions and answers to do with jobs and professions. So let's now have a little look at some, some occupations and professions that we have. I have a feeling that a lot of you are going to know all of these jobs. Art, I will quickly just answer your question. What is the meaning of furlough? Very good question. <laughs> so furlough is a new term that has entered uh, our English language a couple of months ago. And our government introduced it. So if you cannot work because of the pandemic, as obviously a lot of companies had to close down and shut down all their business, the government would pay you 80% of what you earned. So I think it started in March and I think it's continuing until November, but the rules are slightly changing. So at the moment, if you've been furloughed, so you cannot work, you will be paid 80% of your salary or wage from the government. So your company is not paying it, the government is paying it. So it's a good scheme, I think. As always, there's a lot of loopholes and gray areas with it, but that's the general concept of being furloughed. And how can you use it? I've been furloughed. You can just put it into a regular past tense, or he has been furloughed, or I am furloughed for four months. Um, so it just goes into a regular past tense. You'll hear it quite a lot for the next few months. Okay, so let's have a look at some jobs that people may have. If you know, I'm conscious of the time, so I'm not going to um, let you answer every single one of them. But if you know the meaning of this job, so what do they do? You can write it in the comments. So our first one is an accountant, an accountant. So what do you think an accountant does? Would you like to be an accountant? I personally would not like to be an accountant. <laughs> I don't think I'd be very good at it. <laughs> so I would never get a job as an accountant. <laughs> but what do you think it is to be an accountant? 
What do you think they work with? Where do you think they work? If you are an accountant. So I'll let you answer this one. Oh, you guys are getting it. Yeah, so English Fives, Accountant C, very good. Um, related to banks work, perfect work with money, counts money, I guess. Very good, everyone's doing really well. So the, an accountant looks after the finances of an organization. So spot on, they work with money. Very good, Super Wham, deal with big accounts and money related issues. A bank accountant, accountant is a good example of a job, very good. So yeah, so they work with the money. The money side and the figures, very good. Lots of celebrities have their personal accountants. <laughs> Do they? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe if you have a lot of money, you need your own accountant. <laughs> uh, I have a good friend who is an accountant, and I think it's quite a stressful, stressful job. But it's a good job. But I couldn't do it. Um, so our next one is a baker. I'm going to go through this one because I believe that most people will know it. So a baker is someone who bakes bread. So you would find them in a baker, in a bakery. <laughs> um, this sounds like a wonderful job to be a baker as well. Uh, my mum is also, she's not a baker, but she does bake good cakes. <laughs> Raphael, very good. So our next one is a barber. A barber. And a barber is someone who cuts men's hair. So in English, we have a barber and a hairdresser. So a hairdresser works with women's hair and a barber works with men. So they would do the beard and the hair of a man. Very good English vibes. Yep, very good. There's a man's hairdresser. Perfect. So our next one we have is a bar, bar man or bar woman <laughs> or bar maid. And this is someone who serves drinks. So they work behind a bar. So this would be normally, they would be working with a lot of alcohol. So they might work in a bar or a pub and you would say, I'm a bar maid, meaning that you serve drinks. It's a very hard job. I've been a bar maid before. And it's such a hard job. It's very hard. Oh, Kamal. Very, thank you for sharing. Um, an accountant job, not counting money, full financial issues at any company or corporation. I'm an accountant for several years and now I'm a realtor. Very nice. Thank you for sharing. Hairstylist Raphael is a very good way to not put a gender with it. Very good way. So you could just see a hairstylist and they could work with men or with women. English vibes, bartender is the same. Yeah. And again, bartender is more gender neutral. So that's a very good way to, to say it. OK, so the next one we have is a butcher. A butcher. <laughs> if you are a butcher, you prepare and sell meat. So you're working with animal produce again it's another job that I couldn't do um I don't think I'd be very good at chopping up meat <laughs> but it just means that you work with uh meat products from animals and you also can buy meat from a butcher's butcher with meat lolly lolly I was a barmaid when I was a student did you enjoy it it's a very hard job um so our next Jose, excellent, the person who cuts the meat, very good. Um, the next job we have is a chef. Now, I believe we all probably know a chef, as I know we have someone watching who is a chef. And a chef is someone who prepares and cooks food. So maybe they work in a restaurant or in a pub, and they are cooking the food for other people to eat. Again, another stressful job. Johnny are you a vegetarian I'm not I'm not I do tend to give up meat a couple of times a year um and I try not to eat too much meat but I'm not a vegetarian um no my biggest thing for me is I love fish and seafood so 
I try, I struggle to give up that. I could be a pescatarian, I think, quite easily. Lolly Lolly, there are lots of great chefs in France. Yeah, they are. And Jose, chef is a manager in the kitchen. Yes, so they are top, top in the kitchen world. The chef, head chef. We have head chef and sous chef, which I believe is also another French word. <laughs> um, so then moving on, we have a dentist and a doctor, which I believe that you're all probably going to be familiar with these occupations. So a dentist looks after people's teeth and a doctor looks after people's health. Obviously, we have a lot of different types of doctors, uh, which I'm not going to go through them all now. But we have a doctor for every single body part, which is good. And I think doctors and nurses are all being slightly more appreciated at the moment, which is also very good because I think they have one of the hardest jobs in the world. Um, super Wham, you're a vegetarian. Do you miss meat? Have you ever eaten meat? And vegan, someone said, what is vegan? English Vibes has answered wonderfully. A vegan is never eating meat and dairy. Yes. So you have cut out all animal products. So you don't eat eggs, you don't eat cheese, you don't eat milk, you don't eat um, beef or pork or chicken. So you cut out all animal produce is what being a vegan is. Um, apparently it's good for you. One of my good friends is vegan. So that's a dentist and a doctor. Does anyone know this word, a fishmonger? A fishmonger. So if I said, I'm a fishmonger, what would my job be, do you think? Hello, Chris. So this is Chris who uh, was on our live on Sunday. He's back. <laughs> um, back by popular demand. Lolly Lolly said, you don't eat honey. Oh, Lolly, I love honey. That's one of my favorite foods in the world, honey. I don't think I could ever give up honey. But yes, um, English vibes. Yes, no fish and honey, perfect examples. So if you're vegan, you won't be eating honey because they it's from a bee, so it's from an animal, so they don't have it. Um, English vibes and super wham and lolly, very good. You're all getting it perfectly. A, fu a fishmonger is someone who prepares and sells fish. So again, quite a smelly job. <laughs> but yeah, so you would say they work in a fishmonger's. So they are preparing fish. It's another job I personally couldn't do, but I do really enjoy eating fish. <laughs> um, okay, so then we have complete uh, 180, a flight attendant. A flight attendant. So I believe that you most of you probably know this occupation. So if you're a flight attendant, you're looking after the passengers on a plane. So another way to say this is an air steward, um, and probably a common way, but slightly dated, is an air hostess. Um, I think now more people try and say air steward because it's gender neutral, um, or flight attendant. Yeah, Raphael, air stewardness, uh, very good. <laughs> English vibes, pong and niff slang for smell and British. Yeah, pongy. That's what, <laughs> yeah, it's good. Air hostess, yeah, super warm, perfect. And lolly lolly, they take care of passengers on a plane, perfect. So then we have a judge. So we have judge and lawyer. So a judge is someone who judges and sentence the people. So they will decide on how long someone will go to jail or prison for and serve time. And a lawyer is the person who defends and prosecutes the person. So if you got into trouble, you would want to get yourself a lawyer to help defend you. So that's what a lawyer is. And the judge is the person who sits and gives the sentence. And typically in the UK, you have to start off as a lawyer and work your way up to become a judge. So you can't just enter a judge as your first job. 
Hmm, English guys, yes. Judges are also in Britain's Got Talent. <laughs> it's quite an egotistical name, actually. <laughs> but a judge um, is, yeah, they are someone who, again, because they're judging, they're seeing the talent and saying whether they think it is good or not. Uh, Chris has come with a question, Chris Ward. What is your opinion on young about young people aspiring to be famous? YouTubers, TikTokers, Instagram models. Do you think this is a sensible profession goal? Um, personally, each to their own. You do what makes you happy. I don't think... I, I think fame is a dangerous game. I actually wouldn't want to be famous myself. I think it's you're I think you're very judged if you're in the public eye and you're judged quite harshly. I think for younger children now who are aspiring to this, I think you have to be really mentally quite strong because you do get some nasty comments on social media. People think they can judge you a lot. So I think if that's your goal, go for it, but get yourself a good support network who will keep you level headed and keep you strong. Um, and also there's lots of other jobs that are amazing as well. <laughs> I think we definitely are living in a world where influencers are taking pride of place at the moment. Um, but perhaps after the pandemic, we're going to realize the importance of having great healthcare. Um, Judge and lawyers, challenging work. Yes, I think so. Uh, an attorney is the same as a lawyer. And a judge sends pe people to jail. Exactly. Very good. Very good. So we have next then a nurse, which we have talked about quite a bit. And obviously, Lolly Lolly, you're a mental health nurse. Um, so a nurse looks after patients. And again, there's many types of nurses, but all very important. So this is one I wanted to ask you. An optician. An optician. So what do you think an optician does? I might be trying to give you a clue. <laughs> Maybe not a good clue. <laughs> um, yeah, if you've seen my uh, sex-related video, Giving you the bedroom hours. <laughs> uh, Judge Simon Cowell, yes. Raphael has said, I would like to be an astronaut or at least a pilot, an aeroplane pilot. Mm, mm, very good jobs, Raphael. I would like to be an astronaut, actually. I've been to NASA um, space station in America, uh, south of Florida, I believe. And it was amazing. We saw a big, big spacecraft, <laughs> a rocket. <laughs> and it was very cool, very, very cool. Um, and there's a British astronaut, actually, if you're interested, Raphael, called Tim Peake. And he's very good to follow on social media. He gives you lots of um, information. He's quite inspiring. So we're getting lots of people here. Sorry, I went off topic. <laughs> Optician, very good. English Vibes is getting it right. Um, Lolly Lolly is getting it right. Super warm. Um, oh, there we go. David, my brother stepped in. Kennedy Space Station. Was it not NASA? <laughs> Oh, it's NASA. Um, so lolly lolly, optician, test your sight. Exactly. So an optician is someone who looks after people's eyesight. Very good. Very good. So that's who we would go. And you would get a mark on how your eyes are and whether you may need glasses or contact lenses. Um, Raphael, you're welcome. Ah, so Van, Kalpana Chola. Sorry, probably saying her name wrong. Indian female astronauts. Very good. Very good. You probably need some more female astronauts, actually. Um, yes, Johnny, a person who treats eyes. Very good. You guys are knowing it. So I'm going to run through some quickly because I am aware that I'm taking up a lot of your time. And I have a quick game I want to play at the end. Um, a porter. If someone says a porter, what do you think this job is? A porter or a porters? Uh, 
Oh yeah. So it's not like Harry Potter, <laughs> a porter. So P O R T E R S, a porter. What do you think their job is? English vibes? Not not a bad guess. Like the people to bring, like on a plane to bring your luggage. If you ignore the plane bit, you're pretty much spot on. Um, no, but that's a, I'm actually not sure what their job is, the people who make sand, sand sculpture. I think they're a sculptor. Um, a portal's job. Lolly Lolly, perfect example. So they take your luggage in a hotel. So that's exactly what they do. They carry other people's bags and luggage. So that's a porter. Very good. Um, I'm going to run through a couple more and then we're going to play the game just before the end. So we have receptionists. It's someone who meets and greets visitors. So they may work in an office or in a hotel. You often will have a receptionist in any sort of company. Um, the artist said work to make sure that all type of buildings are neat the porters yeah they're not necessarily doing the cleaning they're more just doing the carrying of people's bags and i think if you have a porter it's a good thing to tip so to give them a little bit of money um so then we have a secretary which is someone who arranges appointments types letters and organizes meetings so that's a secretary very similar to a pa which is a personal assistant um so you help someone else manage their tasks by organizing their diary and um, organizing meetings for them and making their life a little bit easier the reason i know a lot about that is because my mum is a secretary and pa <laughs> So then we have a surgeon, which I believe most of you will know, which is people who operate on someone. So they perform the operations. Very tough job. Um, and we're going to finish it with this job to see if anyone knows. Put this as a question. Does anyone know what a tailor does? A tailor. What do you think their job is? If I would say I am a tailor. What do you think I do? And then as you're typing your comments, I'll just go through my last four. Um, it's a technician, which is someone who organizes and repairs technical equipment. A vet, uh, another very important job, looks after people's animals. Um, that's another job that I would love to have done, actually. Yeah, an animal doctor. A uh, waiter and a waitress which is people who serve you food and drinks in a restaurant. And the last one is a welder, which is someone who makes metal, what well, turns metal into things. So they weld metal to make things. And they normally work in factories and construction. So very good. So that's the end of my list. And Taylor, I'm seeing that most people are getting it correct. A tailor sews clothes, perfect English vibes. A tailor is a person who fixes your clothes, lolly lolly, um, make your clothes, Jose who makes clothes, exactly, that's exactly what a tailor is, amazing. They design, make, alter or repair garments, which is a posh word for clothes. <laughs> okay, so I'm aware of the time um, and I don't want to keep you too much longer, so I'm going to finish on a quick quiz, a quick game, we should say. So a vocabulary quiz, who am I? So I'm going to read you a statement and I want you to type what job I am doing. So who is the person that would say this? Um, okay, so number one, I bring you dinner in a restaurant. After dinner, I bring the bill. Please remember to leave me a tip. <laughs> so who am I? What's my job? I'll read it one more time for you. I bring you dinner in a restaurant. After dinner, I bring the bill. Remember to leave me a tip. 
Oh, very good English vibes. Perfect. So I am a waitress. <laughs> Only because I'm a woman, I'm a waitress. But yes, a waiter or a waitress. Well done, everyone who is getting it correct. You're all so good. <laughs> very good. Yeah. Amazing. Okay, so number two. Number two. If you have a problem with your car, I can help fix it. Who am I? So if you have a problem with your car, I can fix it. So who am I? What is my job? I'll have a sip of my tea. You guys are very, very clever. <laughs> Perfect. Very good. Jonas, a mechanic. Exactly. So I am a mechanic. I can fix your car. <laughs> very good. Very, very well done, everyone. Okay, so number three. Tricky one, this one. If you need help finding a book, come and see me and I will help you find it. I will probably be standing behind the desk or tidying books. So if you need help finding a book, come and see me and I will help you find it. I will probably be standing behind the desk or tidying books. <laughs> English vibes, you're so fast. <laughs> so this is the right one for number three. It's a little bit tricky, number three. It is a, a librarian, a librarian. <laughs> so a salesman, not quite, but I could be selling books. A receptionist is a very good guess. Um, Johnny, a librarian is the answer I was going for. Um, so you would probably find me in a library. Very good. Okay, I'll do two more. So I'm going to pick pick my best ones. Um, okay, this is another tricky one. Very tricky one. If you want to buy a loaf of bread, you have to pay me on your way out of the supermarket. So if you want to buy a loaf of bread, you have to pay me on the way out of the supermarket. So who am I? What's my job? So if you want to buy a loaf of bread, you have to pay me on your way out of the supermarket. So supermarket is your key. Uh, Valentin, very, very well done, a cashier. Very good, Raphael. Shopkeeper, very close, very close. Um, so if, you, um, if you're in a supermarket, the correct word for the person who does the beeping of the items is a cashier. It's another job I've done actually. Um, and I quite liked it, I didn't mind that job. So a cashier is the person who you pay your items to. So they scan your products, very good. Okay, hmm. I'm trying to think of a tricky one to end on. But if you're enjoying it, let me know because I do have a couple more. But if I'm aware also of keeping up your time. Okay, so the next one. I travel the oceans and the seas. I keep you safe on a boat. Who am I? <laughs> so I travel the oceans and the seas. I help you keep safe on a boat. Who am I? <laughs> so who do you think I am? <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Thank you. <laughs> You'll be doing it next week with me. <laughs> uh, Lolly, Jose, Raphael, you are all typing so fast. Yes, I am a sailor. Um, another job that would be amazing. Great way to travel, I think. Um, to be a sailor. So a sailor is someone who works on a boat and they they do, they, their main job is to keep the, the passengers on there safe. Absolutely. 
And uh, the Navy officer, very good. That's a particular type to be in the Navy. Um, it's the Army of the Seas. Captain Jack. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Well, I can't think of a quote that he says. <laughs> uh, okay. Here's one more for you. Oh, is it buffering English? I hope it catches up. And nice, well done, a sailor. Hello, uh, VJ. So, the next one. When you ride on an aeroplane, I'm the person flying. <laughs> so, when you ride on an aeroplane, I'm the person flying. Who am I? <laughs> This is a job that I would also would have loved. And actually, my brother wanted to do this job, but he couldn't because he only has one kidney. And to be this job, you have to be in perfect health. Um, I'm not sure if my brother's still here, actually, but that's a true story. Oh, Chris Ward's done one for us. A pilot, Corral, well done. Um, Art, Raphael. Suvam, Jose, excellent, very good, very good. I am a pilot. Okay, so Chris has done one for us. Um, let me see, I don't know this one. So, I explore the galaxies and look out for aliens. Who am I? So I explore the galaxies and look out for aliens. Who am I? <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna give someone time to Right. <laughs> I thought maybe you might be an alien, but I don't think that one's right. An astronaut, Superman, has said, uh, Chris, you're going to have to tell us if we're right or not. I think an astronaut. And look out for aliens. Who am I? It's <laughs> a good one. I would guess. Um, I would guess an astronaut as well. Let us know if we're correct. A star man. <laughs> I'm not sure that's quite grammatically right but I like it <laughs> um a spaceman an astronaut an astronaut people are saying so Chris you need to type I hope he's not gone and then we'll never know <laughs> yay an astronaut we were all right very good very good if anyone else has one please do write it um that was good fun okay okay this is a slightly slightly trick question have a go at this one I teach courses in a university. Who am I? <laughs> so I teach courses in a university. Who am I? Go into that comment. English vibes, very good. I'm hoping the connection is better for you now. Um, a lecturer, good, very good. Art has got the answer I was saying. Lolly has, yes, a professor. So we tend to say someone is a teacher in schools and through college, um, but for a university, we would say that they are a professor or a lecturer. So that is from when someone goes to university from the age 18. So we would call them a professor or a lecturer. Very good, you knew it, you spotted my trick. Okay, um, the final one. You may see me at the beach or at a swimming pool. I will keep you safe. Who am I? So you may see me at the beach or at a swimming pool. I will keep you safe. This is another excellent job, I think. Um, quite a tiring job. Who do you think I am? Ismail, hello. Oops. Yeah, the corral, a guardian angel. <laughs> oh. Um, <laughs> that's nice, yeah. Uh, Johnny said a lifeguard, perhaps in Malibu. Jose got it right. Kral, um, Superwam. Yeah, the correct word should be a lifeguard. 
Yeah, so I will keep you safe as a lifeguard. So you often will see them at the side of a swimming pool or on a beach. I think normally they wear a red t-shirt and that would be a lifeguard. Very good. A pool guard, lifeguard, very good, excellent work. That's the end of the quiz, very good. If anyone has one, please do write one down and we'll try and guess yours, but no pressure, obviously. Um, Cause that's mine finished. I'm glad that you enjoyed that quiz actually. Um, thank you, Raphael, for your really kind comment. I really enjoyed this live. It's been really lovely. And I like it that you all get involved and participate. It helps me not just think I'm talking to myself. <laughs> um, super warm, I have no more. <laughs> I can't think of any off the top of my head. <laughs> I will try and do some more. I will be doing a live on Sunday. So I will try and include some then if I know that you like this style. Um, that's good for me. So and I do really always appreciate your feedback on things that I can improve on or things that you've enjoyed. Do let me know because this class is for for you. I want to help you with your English. Um, okay, I'm going to call it a night <laughs> and I'm going to say massive thank you to everyone for participating and joining in um you you've made my eve you've made my day to be honest and before I came on I was a little bit nervous and I felt quite tired um but I've really enjoyed it I've thoroughly enjoyed doing this quiz and it's because of you lot you you make it for me um and I have a massive amount of respect for you all so thank you very much <laughs> Have a safe day, evening, good night if it's your night time. And I will see you all on Sunday. Take care. Bye-bye.